Hello, I'm Frost, and welcome to my EVE Online War Update. So this week, we're going to do things a little bit differently, and the reason for that is there were some YouTube comments and some comments made on Reddit as well, uh, that I was focusing my, uh, my view very much on Delve and Quirius and not looking at events that were happening in the periphery, and that therefore this was not making me very objective in uh, how this war was playing out. So... What I'm going to do for this week is we're going to look at the big picture. I'm going to look at the various regions that are in play and uh, we're going to go through each of those and then at the end we're then going to focus on the stuff that was more timeline oriented. So here we go. Welcome back. So we're not going to waste any time. I'm going to jump straight up into my box. There we go. And as you can see, we got a, a uh, map of New Eden uh, provided by Dotland. And what I'm going to do is I've got a little gadget here. Uh, so I'm going to be able to now draw the areas where uh, we're going to be talking about. So we've got Delve. Uh, then we're going to move across to Quirius. We're going to go up to Catch. We're going to go past Dementia. We're going to include Wicked Creek. We're going to go back. Uh, we're going to include Stain, even though just one structure died there. Essatoria. Delve, and then I'm going to pop up to Fountain and back down. So these are the regions that are currently in play. Now, what do I mean by in play? Well, in play to me means uh, where there have been sovereignty changes to factions that are aligned uh, in this war, uh, or a substantial numbers of structures have died, as in more than just one or two random structures. And these are all the areas where Fortizars, Asbels, uh, Sotillos, have died and where there's been sort of changes of sov. So nothing has actually happened in period basis or in Paragon Sol. And then uh, Impasse and Fetabolis has also been very, very quiet, although they are relevant uh, as these, uh, especially Impasse and Fetabolis are part of Legacy Coalition. Right, so now we kind of got that underway, we know the areas that we're going to cover. We're going to start off with Wicked Creek. So let me turn off uh, this gizmo. Uh, there we go. And then I can now click on Wicked Creek. And the area that we were really looking at is, if I bring up my uh, little pen tool again, is uh, this area up here, right there. And if I grab my little pink marker, uh, C -O C006 is the one that is of particular interest. Now, uh, I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, C006 is a chain keep star system. So there is a test keep star in there that is part of the long sort of keep star chain that um, Legacy Coalition have. And this is about the furthest extent of it. Now, uh, in it uh, started taking an interest, or Volta actually, Volta started taking an interest uh, in these four systems and actually reinforced all the iHubs. And um, then on top of that, what happened was on uh, Monday the 15th, literally a few hours after my last video came out, uh, in it attacked the Fortizar that was there, uh, and Asbel was also attacked, uh, both belonging to Test. So let me just turn this off. And what we'll do is we'll look at this Fortizar. There we go. So this Fortizar died. And uh, you can see the initiative brought a Macarial fleet for this. And it pretty much died uncontested. Now, the reason for that uh, is primarily because it's of little value, the Keepstar and the Asbel were a little value to Fire Coalition. Now, Fire Coalition uh, live in Wicked Creek and Deterid and Innsmother, which are the kind of the neighboring systems, and are part of Pappy. Now, they only care about the Keepstar. And uh, so, therefore, the, the only thing that really, really happened in terms of uh, attacks and of um, stuff being contested was a dread bomb who we're going to come back to a little bit later as they're very very relevant in catch uh, they anchored a fortizar uh, in c006 now uh, to this there was a response and so this is the uh, dread bomb fortizar and as you can see it was killed on the anchoring time uh, what was interesting for this was it was actually anchored at uh, 0 to uh, AM or 2 AM UTC. Now this is a really, really bad time uh, for the Russian alliances because they're three hours, three to four hours ahead of UTC. So this would be 5 AM uh, for XIX, Legion of Death, etc. Uh, but uh, Fire is also made up of Razor and Razor are very strong in the EU and are pretty good on the US time zone as well. And one of the things to note here as well is that they do have at least carriers, so they do have some kind of a capital presence. 
And as we'll see from Catch in a little bit uh, later, is that Dreadbomb have been very successful in Catch because they have you know, a, a capital dominance over a lot of the alliances that are in Catch at the present time, or were in Catch, should I say. So that's kind of been what's happening in, in Wicked Creek. So there's kind of been this focus in this area. Now the initiative took an interest as well. Uh, and the reason why the initiative took an interest, if I go back to my universe map, uh, the initiative are kind of in curse and they're specifically in uh, sort of the OSHT-A area. Uh, they may be a little bit further up towards Vol as well. And the reason why they're here is that because it, it's a, an NPC region, uh, so therefore they can't be kicked out. They can use NPC stations as their base. Uh, it jumps into UTAC Q, which is straight into Catch. But if you actually look on this map, uh, even though the universe, uh, you look here, you see Curse, and you look at Wicked Creek, and they're kind of like, you know, it's two regions away. It's not actually that far because Scalding Pass is a very short connecting point between Curse and Wicked Creek. So if we go back to Curse, if you go from OSHT, we go up to Vol, and you go down to EIN, so it's about six jumps, and we then jump to EIN, you can see another three jumps and you're into Wicked Creek, into C006. It's one of the reasons why it's in the Keepstar chain. So, uh, Initiative have the ability to project into Wicked Creek and Scalding Pass as well as into Catch, although that has been the area that has been of primary interest. So, talking of Catch, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to Catch. Uh, there we go, Catch. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is Wrecking Crew. So, Wrecking Crew are a, a, a fairly loose coalition. Uh, it's made up of Dreadbomb, um, let me see, um, HTP, Unruh Third Party, uh, Purple Helmeted Warriors, uh, and a few other alliances uh, who don't have much of a love for Legacy. And so they came to catch simply to harass uh, Legacy Coalition and Test Alliance. Uh, and um, as a consequence of this, they started like attacking stuff in Northern Catch and um, then ended up taking loads of sov up there. Now, I spoke to someone in Dreadbomb and said, you know, are, are you being paid by the Imperium? Are, they, are you doing mercenary work for them? And they said, no, we're just here for the lols. We're here for the content. And uh, because we kind of cleared out so many structures and Watchmen kind of failed uh, in that area, we were able to just take loads of sov and we used it to our advantage. So uh, as well as um, wrecked, uh, Wrecking Crew, we also have uh, Simple Farmers and um, Dock Workers. Now you can see Simple Farmers have taken uh, some uh, sob up here and uh, they've been harassing Brave uh, on a pretty, pretty hard lake, pretty hard as well. Uh, the initiative, as you can see from what I mentioned earlier, around OSHT, They've now started taking some soft uh, UTAC Q, which is actually a Keepstar system for uh, for test. I've also uh, pushed down into BTAC three. Now, what's happened in Catch is obviously the wet, the Watchmen have had a kind of cascade, and I can actually show you this if we go back to our universe map uh, and we bring up the Watchmen. Here we go. You can see that literally in the last weeks, so my last video came out on the fifteenth. That was the day when their members just went vroom and just dropped right down. Their sovereignty has also gone to pretty much nothing. Uh, most of their corpse have now left. So we can see the Watchmen as an alliance that has pretty much collapsed under this pressure. The other alliance uh, in, sorry, let me go back to Catch. Uh, the other alliance in Catch that has been affected has been Warped Intentions. Uh, let me double check. Yes, yeah, so Warped Intentions. So they've kind of been pushed back to these few systems. Now, Warp were also in Immensia, and we'll cover Immensia in a minute. Uh, but they've been put in under quite a lot of pressure as well. Now, uh, let me just double check. I've obviously checked my notes here so I don't miss anything. Uh, the other one as well is Evictus. Now, Evictus were in the southern region down here. So you can see these pink systems now. That uh, These are all iHubs, by the way. I focus mostly on iHubs rather than TCUs, as they're more important. So Evictus were down in the south here, and Drakaris, uh, which are a Chinese alliance aligned to the Imperium, and Red Alliance, which are a Russian alliance aligned to the Imperium, have kind of taken over these systems and pushed Evictus out. And Evictus have actually moved to Fethabolis. So if we go back to our universe map quickly, so there's a catch right there. They've gone right down to Fethabolis. And there you go, you can see them down here. This is Evictus, IOU. Let me see the clicks, there we go, Evictus. You can see the, the icon there. 
So they've moved down to Fethabolis, it puts them closer to test in Essatoria, which is the test home system, home region. Uh, so what we do is we go back to catch. <laughs> so if I'm jumping around a lot, but you can see why doing the big picture that it moves across regions and, and sometimes it can be quite difficult to try and put this all into a way that makes sense. So Chikaris and Red Alliance have pushed Evictus out of catch. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that Red Alliance had a bit of a blip. Um, what I mean by a blip is if we actually look at their alliance, uh, you can see that their members had a massive drop at one point. Once again, round about the time of my last video, it just seems like a few hours after I do my video, like stuff happens. So uh, they went from like sort of 1,100 members uh, down to about 500 overnight. Now there were some internal issues within Red. Uh, I'm not going to go into details on that. You can go into Reddit to look at it if you want. Uh, I'm purely looking at it from the strategy side. Uh, but the thing is, is that Red Alliance bounced back from this, as you can see, not quite back to their full momentum, uh, but they did manage to bounce back. You can see their corporations had a big drop and then they kind of reformed or rejoined the Alliance once they kind of got their, their affairs in order. So I just wanted to bring this up. Uh, just so it doesn't feel like it's getting missed out as it was quite a quite a major event at the time when it happened. So coming back to catch, that leaves us with Brave. So as we know from last week, Brave are going to be moving out of catch and going to be settling in Quirius. Uh, we've already seen that they can't hold two regions. They did try to hold Sov in Quirius as well as catch. That didn't work out. They moved everything back to catch. Uh, and now they're moving all the way back again. So they, as I mentioned last week, they kind of got their work cut out in terms of dealing with all of this. In the meantime, uh, Init have been pushing hard on Brave and they actually tried to drop an Asbel uh, in GE TAC 8JV uh, and I have it right here, there we go. So you can see that um, there was, uh, they tried to anchor it and they were unsuccessful in anchoring it. What was interesting with this uh, and the reason why I bring it up is because Legion of Death uh, or fire, should I say, to be precise, um, came in to uh, to help out on this as well. So, uh, but the main thing is, is that they, they weren't able to anchor that. Now, the other uh, fight that happened uh, was in EX6-AO. Uh, so EX6-XO is down here um, uh, in a system that uh, the iHub currently belongs to already replaced. And uh, the interesting thing with this fight, uh, and if I can bring it up, there we go, here's the battle report, um, is two things. The first one is uh, we formed Volta. So as I mentioned, Volta uh, went and aggressed uh, initially uh, some, some Sov in GE TAC, the capital system of Brave. Uh, then they took some Sov uh, in Wicked Creek, as we saw earlier, which was then retaken back by XIX. But they seem to be working with the initiative. Uh, you know, they didn't just bring, you know, just a, a fleet to uh, to whore on a kill melt here. They actually brought in, if, if I scroll down far enough, you can see they brought in a proper full-on hack fleet, a Serb fleet. So it does appear that the initiative are able to bat phone Volta for certain engagements. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting is I mentioned the Wrecking Crew. So the Wrecking Crew uh, also include the Rogue Consortium. Now. Uh, the Wrecking Crew have been attacking Legacy Coalition, but in this particular instance, they appeared to side with Legacy Coalition against the initiative. So, uh, like I said, you know, the, um, the, the whole Wrecking Crew situation is very much a third party, uh, which is influencing the war, but can flip sides and just basically taking the fights they'd want to take and will pick sides as it suits them. So. Something to be aware of there, that, that this is very much a, a case of opportunities for a wrecking, wrecking crew. So that kind of brings us up to date with what's kind of going on in Catch. Now, uh, now we move on to Immensia. Now, Immensia is uh, much more of a kind of a cascade of, of, of stuff happening. Uh, so if I go back to Universe, and you can see Cas um, Immensia is just right here. Let me bring up my little... Uh, tool again, my little highlighter, and we're going to highlight Immensia. Now, the reason why Immensia has kind of had so many problems is Immensia is made up of primarily of smaller alliances within Legacy Coalition. Now, uh, they no longer have the benefit of the kind of capital defense forces and the numbers that TEST can provide to provide protection. Now, TEST also 
are in Essitoria. That is kind of their home area. So we're looking at two reg three regions, Sustain to Cat to Immensia, and it's a long way to go in order to be able to protect that. And as a consequence of that, kind of Immensia has been left to fight its own fights. And what we've seen as a consequence of that, and this whole top northern area, uh, where you're seeing all these kind of blank eye hubs now and just a few fed up left, that's Federation Uprising. Basically, fed up have, have left the area. And um, if we look at BTAC uh, R in particular, a um, Prometheus Fortizar died, so a faction Fortizar died, uh, and it was on the 16th. Uh, I don't have my thing up, I think that was the Tuesday. <laughs> Let me bring up my uh, calendar and I can see. Uh, yeah, so that was the Tuesday. So on, uh, in the early hours of the morning, you know, 1 a.m. UTC, um, Dread Bomb came into this, but the people that are actually been causing the most havoc in Immensia are, um, in fact, um, Deepwater Hooligans. There we go. <laughs> Had a bit of a mind blank there. So Deepwater Hooligans are the ones that have been creating the main issue, but uh, obviously Dread Bomb went, you know, it's a structure, and they do have a much, like as I said before, they have a stronger capital force than most of these smaller alliances. And this is how they were able to sort of create havoc and create real pressure on these smaller alliances within Legacy Coalition. So this faction Fortizar died um, within um, and Fed Up moved. Now, what's really interesting with Fed Up is that, as I said, they moved out of Immensia and they've kind of given up on their territory. But where they've gone to is really surprising. If we go back to Universe again, they seem to be setting up shop in Fountain. So Fountain is all the way up here. Uh, it's next to Delve. And uh, as you can see, there we go. Fed Up is down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It is these uh, yellow, uh, yellow systems. And uh, they're in between um, French Connection. French Connection are allied to the Imperium. And obviously we've got loads of Init uh, in Fountain as well. And I find this really surprising that they went here. Now, I thought they would have gone to Quirius, where Brave are setting up shop and where Severance were already quite well established. Uh, and they're also, you know, still within region, reach of, of Pappy forces that have an interest in Quirius at the moment. Now, the reason why I thought they probably would have done this, uh, but this is just pure speculation on my part, is if you jump into ZXB down here at the bottom, you can see that you're only literally if you're one bridge, a Titan bridge away to ZXB, and then you can get into Fountain. And they're fairly close to the main Pappy forces. Now, I don't know whether this suggests a loss of confidence by Federation Uprising in Tess being able to back them up. And so they're looking for Pappy as a whole to be there as a defense mechanism to them or whether it's something else. But interesting to see them move to Fountain, and uh, I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on that to see how that kind of works out. So we're now gonna come back to uh, Immensia. So in Immensia, we've talked about Fed Up and uh, how Fed Up moved out, but then the other alliance that was in Immensia that has kind of bailed out as well is Warped Intentions. Now, Warped Intentions had all of this sub that was in the south here that you can see they've lost. Uh, they also had some solve around here uh, and have lost it to Combat Wombat, which has got to be one of the greatest names for an alliance in EVE. So Combat Wombat, as you will uh, surely guess, are in kind of the AU time zone, so the Australian time zone. So you've got Combat Wombat and uh, Deepwater Hooligans, who are big AB, that's their ticker. These are the two guys that have kind of really kind of pushed in to Immensia and started taking solve and aggressing structures pretty uh, aggressively. Uh, and in fact, I think an Asbel died in LTAC 5 uh, right here um, uh, during the last week. So what does that do for the other two alliances that are there? So we have um, Reseda Regnum uh, who are here and you have Vindictive. Now, Vindictive have been doing some interesting stuff. So Vindictive obviously in Immensia and are clearly a target, but they've been creeping over into Tenerifis. So if we move into Tenerifis, which is one region away, and you can see there's a, a gate right here next to the systems where they hold SAF, you can see they've started taking over a territory in southern Tenerifis. Now this area was previously owned by Siberian Squad, and you can still see some, some old Siberian Squad uh, uh, SAF still there. And if you remember, Siberian Squad were in Legacy Coalition, then they left like a month or so or two ago, and then just recently uh, they joined up with the Imperium and have then started trying to take Sarv over in Quirius. 
Uh, so Vindictive have kind of moved into Tenerife. So that's kind of interesting because now we're moving kind of more, this area is kind of a cross between Fire Coalition and Legacy, it's kind of their boundary area. And if we go back to Immensia, the other gate that they have access to with their particular pocket up here is Deterit. Now this what I found really surprising is that Vindictive have started taking Sov in Deterit. Now, here we are completely in Fire Coalition territory. As you can see, we've got XIX and Razor here. And uh, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on here, but what this would suggest, and once again, this is pure speculation on my part, but it looks like Vindy are, are kind of looking to align themselves more with Fire Coalition than with Legacy Coalition. Now, I don't know on what terms this um, this territory has been taken by Vindy, whether kind of Fire Coalition gave it to them or whether they kind of just walked in because it happened to be unused and it's still to be decided. So this is another one that's going to need to be uh, taken a good look at over the next week or two, to see, or two to see how this plays out. And then that leaves uh, Rosé de Regno. So they're, they're kind of all on their own here. And uh, as we know, they're, they're not going to kind of get to get support from the rest of uh, Legacy Coalition, as kind of everyone else has just moved out or just ignored it. Uh, and so it's going to be, once again, we're going to have to keep an eye on this and see how this plays out. I personally don't think that, you know, Rosé de Regno on their own can hold off um, Deepwater Hooligans and Combat Wombat, especially if they call in Dreadbomb for support. And so Immensia is kind of one of those systems now uh, that is pretty much can be described as lost. So looking at our map here, um, Catch and Immensia, uh, Legacy believe they could hold these regions. And the reality is, is they haven't. You know, these have now become the Badlands. You know, they're not really owned by anybody uh, that's aligned to the Big Blue Donut you know, on either side. Uh, and so it has become kind of the territory of deep water hooligans, simple farmers, uh, wrecking crew, and uh, they're kind of laying waste to this region and doing with it as they want. So that kind of gets us up to date with uh, those two systems, the Catch and Immensia, uh, and also I've, I've touched on now Tenerife and Detroit as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to uh, Essatoria. So before I move on to Essatoria, I'm going to say very quickly, if you enjoy my content, Please do give me a like, please subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications as I do release these every week. Mention me in your Corp Discord, in your Alliance Discord, as this really helps for the channel to grow. And uh, yeah, there you go. And also you can join my Discord. Uh, my link is in the description below. The reason why I mention my Discord is uh, I do rely on both sides of this, uh, this war and also the third parties uh, keeping in contact with me, letting me know about stuff that's going on. Uh, it helps me get a bit of an insight as to uh, what areas are of particular interest to uh, each of the, uh, the factions involved. Right, so moving on, Essatoria. So Essatoria, uh, down here at the bottom, uh, if we click on that, is home to Test. Now Test own the vast majority of the region, but Bastion are here. Now Bastion are aligned to the Imperium. And Bastion have had quite the week in Essatoria. So, First up, uh, on Tuesday the 16th, uh, they killed a Fortizar uh, and a, on, in VL7-60, and they also killed a Sotillo uh, in here uh, on uh, the 18th. Now, they're kind of just clearing out this space and kind of really getting themselves established. But the big kind of thing that happened for the Bastion uh, was actually on Thursday the 18th, and it happened in a system of DTAC-F. Now, what was really surprising with this is a Sotillo died. Now, this was a test Sotillo, uh, and it was in a system that Bastion own uh, both the TCU and the IHUB. You know, they are well established there. And this makes this kill really, really surprising. So let me bring this kill up, and you will see why this is so surprising. Right, here we go. So this Sotillo died for a value of 364 billion esque. So this, uh, I had a look, and, and this appears to be the second most expensive structure kill so far in EVE. The only thing that I could see that could top that was a Keepstar that died for 708 billion ISK uh, in uh, wormhole space all the way back on the 15th of July 2017. So uh, the reason why this, this uh, kill was so high 
was because of the loot drop. So the loot fairy said yes to Bastion. And I'm really, really surprised that Test not only left the kind of the T2 rigs in here when it was in a system that was completely owned by Bastion, uh, but also the fact they didn't clear it out. And if we have a picture here of the loot and you can see that the loot is all capital parts. We're looking at 100 billion of capital parts. So not only has this Satya died and given a nice juicy keel mail for the Imperium and Bastion in particular, on top of that, it's kind of payback for the Bastion because the Bastion, uh, the first T2 uh, Sutio to die uh, belonged to the Bastion or in QY6 in Delve all the way back in November. So they got their payback. So now they've, they've managed to kill a Sutio, T2 Sutio. But also they've been given all the parts they need to maintain their invasion of Esatoria. You know, 100 billion of capital parts, that's going to go a long way towards aggressing uh, Esatoria. Now, the other thing I want to bring up with Esatoria, and it's just a, 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 an observation on my part, that there was a fight that happened in CRTAC 0E5. Now, all the way over there on the right-hand side and a little bit of a back pocket over there. But what was interesting about it is what we'll see is that Test brought a hurricane fleet to a hack fight. So um, you can see the kills, uh, 87 ships on this side, 21 ships on the uh, Bastion side. And uh, Isk lost 22 billion, Isk lost to uh, Test versus uh, four and a half to Bastion. Uh, you can't bring a nightmare fleet, a hurricane fleet, sorry, to uh, a hack fleet. We know the meta is clearly said that this will never work. And uh, this once, once again suggests that either the pilots aren't available or that they don't have uh, hack fleets available to them uh, in Esatoria, which would be of great concern. So, oops, let me come back to, uh, to that. There we go. Which, uh, which is, like I say, is of concern because if tests show themselves to be showing weakness in Esatoria, uh, Bastion will become even more aggressive and potentially the Imperium may, you know, goon swarm and, and even in it may actually get involved as well. So once again, something to keep an eye out on. So I think that brings us up to date on Satia, on uh, so Esatoria. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to Quirius. So Quirius, uh, let's go back to my universe map and go down to Quirius. Right, so Quirius uh, has been about Siberian Squad and Brave. So both of these alliances, both on different sides of the war, Siberian Squad being with Imperium, Brave being with Pappy, uh, decided they wanted to set up shop. And so there was quite a lot of fighting over this uh, middle constellation right here. In fact, let me grab my little pen again. Uh, there we go. So this constellation right there. So this has been the one where there's been the most infighting. So Siberian Squad got there first. Brave really wanted to kind of get this constellation. And one of the reasons why, and this ties into uh, the Pappy strategy that's been happening in the last week, and the focus has been on this one particular system, W6V-VM. So W6V-VM is a Keepstar system for uh, Goon Swarm. It's one of the three Keepstars that are in Quirius, uh, the other ones being in F2OY and the other one in GOP. I believe Siberian Squad have set up in GOP, but uh, obviously Pappy are still interested in going after all the Keepstars from the Imperium. And the main way of doing this is the whole Doom Clock scenario, which is flipping the eye hubs, then keeping those eye hubs for 35 days in order to be able to put a Sinojammer in, so they can then control the flow of super capitals into that system for the attack and to restrict the defensive capabilities of the Imperium. So this week, um, Pappy are very much focused on this. They uh, they reinforced the eye hub uh, on the Friday the. Uh, 8th, 19th is it? Friday the 19th. And then they uh, they actually flipped it uncontested on Sunday the uh, 21st, so that was last night. So uh, Pappy seemed very focused on uh, getting themselves uh, these iHubs uh, uh, re uh, secured and trying to take out these keep sides. That's kind of looks like it's gonna be their plan over the next few weeks. In the meantime, Brave have been trying to get settled in here. Uh, and I'm surprised, you can see there's a lot of empty systems here. So. Uh, if you remember earlier, I mentioned about Federation Uprising, Fed Up. I'm surprised they didn't take some of these systems and kind of come in with Brave. And I think maybe they decided that Brave had got their work cut out. Now, one of the things I want to point out here, let me clear this. 
very quickly, is Severance. Now, Severance have been, have been very quiet, but what they did is they moved into Quirias when this kind of area was first cleared uh, by Pappy. And they very, very quietly have been doing what they needed to be doing, which is pushing up their ADMs. So you can see they've got pretty good ADMs. You know, most of them are above four. A whole bunch of them are well into the fives. And so what they've done is Severance have done what Brave really should have done when they first kind of decided, you know, do we come into Quirius? And that is to solidify their position. And so Severance have been living in Quirius for quite a few weeks now, in fact, months possibly. Uh, and uh, they've managed to get themselves very well implanted into Quirius. And I believe they've been also helping Brave quite a lot in trying to get Brave established as well. So uh, I thought, like I said, Fed Up would get involved as well. But at the moment, it looks like Brave and Severance are going to be kind of trying, trying to do this as much as they can on their own and getting Pappy support when it's needed. Right. And then finally, now we come on to Delve. So Delve. Delve comes down to one constellation now and one system. So let me get my little pen up again. Uh, we'll go blue. So the main constellation is the constellation that includes the uh, staging system of Gunswall, which is 1DQ, which is this orange one, uh, so pink one right here. And obviously M2-XFE, where we have the Trap Titans from uh, Pappy. And these are the areas that are the main focus. Now, uh, what happened was on Wednesday the, um, Wednesday the 18th, was it? Wednesday, Wednesday the 17th was, uh, is it Wednesday the 17th? Yeah, Wednesday the 17th. So what happened was uh, Pappy jumped into AWQA. So they jumped into the system right here. And their purpose for this, the, the plan for this, was to kill the Sinojammers and flip the IHUB. Now, they really, really need to be able to get in to this back pocket of the constellation. If they stand any chance of being able to flip the iHub in 1DQ, they're going to have to fight sub warfare in this whole area. And so therefore, uh, they can get to 3TAC-D and ntac a quite easily. But if you're involved in sub warfare, they're going to need to be able to have a uh, structure in uh, AWA and secondly, uh, be able to not have any Sino jammers. So they're able to bridge in from T5Z into 8WA and be able to, um, to then project behind 1DQ and fight over SOP. So this turned into a tie-dye fest. Uh, the fight lasted about five hours, five or six hours, five hours, I think. Uh, and um, the, the Imperium fought really, really hard over the... Um, over these two Sino jammers. Now the consequence of this was it took so long that eventually the IHUB timer went close to, to being an invulnerable. And by the time these two Sino jammers were cleared, uh, the Pappy forces were literally seconds too late to be able to start the IHUB in Tosis and it flipped into invulnerable. And as a consequence of this, uh, the fight came to uh, nothing being achieved for Pappy because obviously the Simon Jones is the rim placed. Now the fight was expensive and if I can bring up the uh, the kills, let me uh, just make sure I've got the right thing selected. Uh, but let me see, where is it? Here is it. There we go. So here is the uh, the battle report. Now what's interesting is that um, Fleetcom uh, went a bit nuts but you can see there's 240 billion lost to Pappy. Uh, it wasn't zero is lost. Uh, if we actually look uh, for the Imperium, if we actually look at um, the uh, timeline, uh, you can see, uh, sorry, the summary, uh, you can see here, if we add up these figures, like the 29 billion, the 32, the 24, the 10, the 8, it comes to about 110 billion. So it's a 240 billion loss to Imperium versus 110 billion loss to the Imperium. For Pappy, uh, most of the losses um, uh, were to do with uh, logistics, so they lost quite a lot of faxes uh, that were trying to drop on their hack fleets to protect their hack fleets. A lot of those died. Uh, there was also a wyvern, a super carrier, uh, that um, got kind of caught up and uh, got bubbled, then came out of the bubbles, got bubbled again and eventually died. Uh, which obviously put a healthy uh, 70, 33 billion towards those losses. Uh, on the other hand, um, the uh, Imperium were fighting a lot with, carry, uh, with supers from their Keepstar 
and they lost a, a whole bunch of heavy fighters, which was a, a considerable loss. And then, as you can see on the old hack fights, uh, it was pretty much a trade on both sides. So the end result with that is that they kind of got nowhere uh, and uh, this is going to be problematic and it's going to be something they're going to have to do again at some point. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come to M2-XFE. So the only thing I'm going to say about M2-XFE is, uh, first of all, Papi are just jumping in continuously, uh, you know, generally at the end of kind of every big fleet. They're coming in, uh, causing the Imperium to form, trying to clear out a few bubbles. Sometimes they have some success, sometimes they don't it kind of flips backwards and forwards. But the main thing of note with M2-XFE is that I can confirm that it is now a capital system. So here's a screen grab uh, in M2-XFE and you can see from the, once again, let me bring up the little tools. I'm, I like my little pen. Uh, let me grab pink, there we go. Uh, you can see from the uh, little star in the sovereignty there that it is now a capital system, which gives a plus two bonus to the ADM for that system, which helps push up the ADM right here. Now, the area that's of interest is um, obviously the doom clock is running on this. The doom clock meaning how long before uh, the iHub is held for 35 days and comes to a strategic index of three, which means it passes this blue marker. We've now reached a level two, uh, so that 21 days have expired. Uh, there's now two more weeks to get to 35 days. So two more weeks and then um, if this iHub is not flipped before then, uh, a test will then be able to put in a Sino Jammer and the Papi forces will then be able to jump in their capitals and supers uh, and the Imperium will have to rely on whatever's logged into that system uh, to be able to fight and, and uh, help defend against getting these, these uh, trapped Titans and uh, other capitals out of the system. So there you go. So that's pretty much given you, brought you up to date on everything that's happened. Hopefully that's given a much more balanced view of what's going on. Uh, once again, leave me your comments. I will be posting this in Reddit. So we'll see what happens with that as well. It will be interesting, I'm sure. Uh, other things to mention just before I go. Uh, Sissy's been mirrored. Uh, this is obviously of interest to pilots that are logged out in M2 TAC. Uh, they are now able to be log in their Titans and, and uh, Capitals in on Sissy and kind of get an idea of where they're positioned uh, on grid. Uh, other things as well. Uh, tomorrow, uh, there's a mass test, that's uh, Tuesday the 23rd, uh, to do with fleet formations. Fleet formations are being brought in as a new feature uh, that are going to allow FCs to warp uh, their uh, fleets in various formations, and some useful, some not. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that will be talked about a lot uh, in uh, coming weeks. Uh, and then Sissy has been spotted that the hacks are getting a rework. So uh, they're losing their Sig Bloom bonus, bonus on Sissy. Uh, which means that they can take more damage while their micro drives are on. And there, there's been changes being made as well to the assault damage control. And then finally, uh, Sinos, we're going to get mobile uh, Sinos, or deployable Sinos. Uh, how well these will be, how useful these will be in fleets uh, is yet to be determined. But just wanted to bring you up to date on that. Right, we're there. So you know how it goes. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, join my Discord, uh, mention me in your Corp Discord and Alliance Discord, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.